Well, Lenas, I would like to take this opportunity and uh, welcome you to my YouTube channel. Uh, before I start with today's lesson, I would like to ask you to please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Then um, let's look at uh, grade 11 geomorphology. In today's lesson, we are going to look at uh, grade 11 geomorphology. We are going to start with uh, looking at uh, horizontal layered rocks. So when it comes to the horizontal layered rocks, uh, what you need to understand is that um, rocks can be in horizontal layers, rocks can be in, in inclined layers or massive rocks. Then topographs associated with horizontal uh, layered rocks develops where the layers of rocks are flat lying, as you can see in this um, image or this picture. So when we have horizontal layered rocks, it simply means that the layers of the rocks, they are flat lying. Then in that case, we are having horizontal layered rocks. And then how do horizontal layered rocks or landscape develop? Then you need to understand that um, the landscapes that develop from horizontal layered rocks, we have hilly landscapes that develop from horizontal layered rocks. And secondly, we have basaltic plateaus. They also develop from horizontal layered rocks and canyon landscapes. And lastly, car landscape. Then in this lesson, we are going to talk about the hilly landscapes that develop from horizontal layered rocks, the basaltic plateaus, the canyons, and the Carol landscape. Then let's start by looking at the hilly landscapes. When it comes to the hilly landscapes, the, what you need to bear in mind is that hilly landscapes are influenced by the climate of the region and the resistance of the rock. So in other words, what will influence the hilly landscape that develops? It is the climate of the region and also the type of rock. Remember, when it comes to rocks, we have rocks which are very hard, which have high resistance to uh, erosion. We also have rocks that have less resistance to erosion, which takes less time to erode as compared to the harder rock. Then, then in hot and uh, humid regions, the slopes that develop there are gentle and round and rounded. So in other words, when the region is hot and humid, the types of slopes that will develop there, they will be gently and they'll be rounded. Then in areas that receives high rainfall results in mass wasting and sheet erosion, while higher, tempera while higher temperatures encourages more of a chemical weathering. Then now let's look at the processes that are associated with the development of hilly landscapes. Um, these hills are formed because the top layer is more resistant to weathering and erosion than the layers underneath. So it means that to have the hilly landscape, the top layer of rock has higher resistance to erosion, has higher resistance to weathering. It takes time to erode. That is why then we are going to have the hilly landscape develop. Because the tap layer is resistant, they stand out as a hill and mountains because they have higher resistance to erosion. The reason for the flat top is that the strata are horizontal uh, to the horizon. That is why they will have what? They will have the flat top because they are horizontal to the horizon. Then there's some concept that we need to understand before we discuss in detail the formation of hilly landscape. The process of weathering, what is weathering? Weathering, we are referring to the process, the breaking down of rocks into smaller pieces. Then erosion, erosion is the removal of broken materials by wind, water or ice. Then now let's look at the development of the hilly landscape in different regions. We have hilly landscapes that develops in, in um, wet and humid 
regions. And then we also have hilly landscapes that develops in arid areas. Then what's the difference between the two? What's the difference between the hilly landscape that develops in uh, wet and humid areas and the hilly landscape that develops in arid areas? Let's note in the next, uh, let's start by discussing uh, hilly landscapes that develop in wet and humid areas. Hilly landscape that develop in wet and humid areas, the slopes around. Remember I said earlier, um, the climate of the region influence the development of the hilly landscape that will be found in that particular region. So wet and humid areas, uh, slopes that will be found there, or hilly landscape that develop the, the slopes around. And then also deep soils developed. Then remember that the hilly landscape, they are developing from horizontal layered rocks. So rocks are horizontal and sedimentary. Then uh, steep hilly landscapes develop. Formation, remember, because these hilly landscapes are developing from wet and humid areas, then uh, they result from chemical weathering because the area receives more of rainfall, then their formation is influenced by chemical weathering. Then chemical weathering results from the high rainfall that the area will be receiving. So you understand when it comes to wet and humid areas, the formation of the slopes that are located in wet and humid areas, they result from chemical weathering because wet and humid areas, they receive more of rainfall. Then when it comes to Hilly landscapes that develop from arid areas, landscapes are more rugged. Soils are coarse and thin. Then weathering and erosion leads to steep, uneven slopes. So this one, they differ from the ones that develops in wet and humid areas because this one, they are more rugged. Uh, and then weathering and erosion leads to, to steep, uneven slopes. Then in terms of the formation of the slopes that develop from arid areas, what influences their formation? Their formation then, they result from mechanical weathering. It is the most active one in arid areas. Then the rock is physically broken down into fragments by means of what? By means of mechanical weathering. So I just need to note the following things, that in wet and humid areas, the slopes that develops that influenced by chemical weathering. Then when it comes to arid areas, the slopes that develop, they are influenced by mechanical weathering is the most active one. Then now let's look at the basaltic plateaus. Basaltic plateaus are also called lava plateaus. Why are the basaltic plateaus called lava plateaus? Because they are built over millions of years by lava pouring out of long narrow cracks in the ground. So because they are built over millions of years by lava that is pouring out of long narrow cracks in the ground, that is why we refer to them as lava plateaus. The lava floods, the landscape built up to form uh, deposits hundreds to thousands of meters thick. For example, here in South Africa, the Drunkensberg Mountain, it is the remnant of basaltic plateau and a popular tourist and holiday destination in South Africa. So you understand the formation of the basaltic plateaus is that they are, we refer to them as the lava plateaus because they are formed because of the lava pouring out of the narrow cracks in the ground. Then this lava then forms these thick deposits, this um, uh, form thick deposits, which then forms this landscape, which we refer to it as a uh, basaltic plateaus. Uh, here in South Africa, we have the Drunkenspec mountain, which is an example of your basaltic plateaus. Then now we are going to look at the canyon landscapes. Canyon landscapes develop where horizontal 
layered rocks erode at different rates. Why do these um, uh, horizontal layered rocks develop at different rates? It's because they don't have, uh, the, it differs when it comes to the level of resistance to erosion. Some have a bit of higher resistance to erosion. Some has less resistance to erosion. That is why then the canyon landscape develops where uh, the layers erode at different rates because the rocks, they don't have same resistance to erosion. At first, the land is level. At, at first, the land is level. But running water soon finds weak places in the hard surface layer. And then when this happens, the river erodes vertically into the land and form deep valleys. So at first, the land is level, but the running water, soon as it flows, finds weak places in the hard surface. Then the river erodes vertically into the land and form the deep valleys of your canyons. Then the valleys have stepped sides. Why do they have stepped sides? Because the horizontal layers uh, have the erode at different rates. The resistant rock forms steep cliff and the less resistant rocks forms the more gently slopes. Then that's how your canyons are, are formed. Then, um, for example, if you check this picture, this picture, it shows these are canyons. These are canyons. We have them in Pumalanga, the area of, um, around the area of uh, Kraskop. That's where we have Blade River Canyons. Then let's discuss the uses, the uses of canyons. Canyons sometimes are dammed to make very deep dam, which can then be used for hydroelectric power. The surrounding plateau itself may be too dry to be of agricultural value. And then another issue of canyons, the, when it comes to the uses of uh, canyons is that impressive scenery makes canyons good for tourist attractions. As I've mentioned that in Pumalanga, we have canyons uh, around the area of Raskop. That's where we have the Blade River Canyons. They attract a lot of tourists. They come to visit uh, that area, which then boosts the local economy and create job opportunities. Then now let's look at the Karu landscape. Karu landscape developed from canyons landscape then the car landscape, large areas are covered with horizontal layered rocks. Uh, the plateau is protected by resistant hard rock, such as uh, dolerite. So rivers erode vertically, forming the canyons. Then let's look at the car landscape that we have. When it comes to the car landscape, we have... Um, Butte, it's a, one of the Karu landscape that we have, your Mesa, your Plateau, and your Conical Hill. But I just wanted to note something. If you check the Plateau, the Mesa, the Butte, all these landform, uh, they have the cap rock, which means the rock that found on the top here, this rock is very hard, has high resistance to erosion. So, but what you need to understand when it comes to the current landscape, first we have the plateau, then when the, when the plateau undergoes erosion processes, then it will form the, it will result in the formation of the mesa. Then when the mesa undergo erosion processes, it will be reduced and it will result in the formation of the butte. Then eventually when the butte undergoes erosion, your scrap retreat, the cap rock, will be removed. This rock will be removed, which is the cap rock. Then it will result in the formation of the conical hill. Then if you can note from this landscape, you can see that your butte, your mesa, your plateau, this landscape, they, this landforms, they have the cap rock. But when you check, the conical hill does not have it because it has been removed because of erosion. Then when it comes to Karu landscape, Carol landscape, this type of landscape forms because of erosion. 
The landscape is characterized by flat topped mountain. If you can just check the, the top of the landscape, they are flat. We have the high uh, resisted rock on top, which takes time to erode. Then dolerite forms the flat top of the hill, which is more resistant to erosion. Then what you need to understand about the formation of the Karoo landscape is that magma intrudes in between the horizontal layers of the hard and softer rock. And then the magma cooled and formed the horizontal seals. And then a typical uh, Karoo landscape then of flat top hills then develop over time. Then there's this process that we need to understand when it comes to the development of this landscape. What is a scarp retreat? It's important to, under to understand the scarp retreat. The valleys widens by means of scarp retreat or of um, back wasting. Scarp retreat is caused by lateral erosion, mass movement and weathering. That's what causes the scarp retreat. So what happens? In other words, when erosion takes place in this landform, then you can see whatever has been eroded there will move down the slope, which that we refer to it as masses. Then it takes over a place over millions of years and um, reduces the original plateau to mesas, buttes, and conical hill. As I've mentioned earlier, firstly, we have the plateau, then when the plateau undergoes the erosion processes, it will result in the formation of the mesa. Then when your mesa is uh, reduced by erosion because of scarp retreat, then it will result in the formation of a butte. And then eventually the butte, if it undergoes erosion and scarp retreat, the cap rock will be removed. So then when the cap rock, rock is removed, it will result in the formation of the conical heal. But let's come here and discuss the difference between the Mesa and the Butte. What is the difference between the Mesa and the Butte? The difference is that when you check the Mesa, the, met the Mesa's width, it is greater than its height. Then when you check the Butte, the height of the Butte, it is greater than its width. Well, Lenas, I hope you have enjoyed uh, the lesson. We have discussed the geomorphology of Great Leaven, horizontal layered rocks, the basaltic plateaus, a hilly landscape, car landscape, and canyons. I hope you have enjoyed the lesson. Please don't forget to subscribe to my uh, YouTube channel.